this episode of Mysteries and Scandals, we'll explore the tragedy of Ed Wood, a man who gave new meaning to the term schlock. Oh my God, he makes, doesn't make A movies, he doesn't make B movies, he makes Z movies. Edward Davis Wood Jr. was born on October 10, 1924 in Poughkeepsie, New York to middle-class parents Lillian and Edward Davis Wood Sr. Actress Myla Nurmi, TV's vampire, knew Ed Wood. Ed Wood grew up to be um, a product of his mother's frustrated wish for a little girl. She actually collected uh, dolls, and I think he was just her largest, most living doll. I am Dracula. The film terrorized and mesmerized young Ed. Wood later told friends that it was Lugosi's performance in Dracula that inspired him to be a motion picture director. He went uh, every Saturday afternoon and spent the entire day in the movie house. Of course, built his dreams largely on what he saw on the screen. And that ultimately put a ring through his nose and drew him to Hollywood. Wood actually thought he could intercut old footage of Bela Lugosi with new footage of a look-alike and no one would notice. Myla Nermi co-starred in the Wood B epic. Somebody came to my door and said, Myla, Edward D. Wood wants you in a film and it's called Grave Robbers from Outer Space. I thought, gee, that's a pretty neat title. I really like that title. He was not exactly Ilya Kazan. He would just say, Vampira, stand over there and walk to the camera. Walk to the camera. Actually, I was 15 minutes on camera. It was that famous 15 minutes, I guess, that Andy Warhol spoke of. <laughs> Ed Wood never found a distributor for Plan 9, and the failure of his pet project crushed him. He was always enthusiastic, except when a film was finished and if it couldn't get distribution and there was no money for the rent and all kinds of realities would come in and make him depressed. But when the project was in progress, he was elated. He was probably um, bipolar, I would say. And by this time, a full-fledged drunk. In the early 1970s, Wood even began to appear in his own porno films, mostly for comic relief. Even so, Wood looked as though he was intentionally humiliating himself. It was one of those sleazy things, I don't know its name, but it was one of those, and there was Ed, dressed in an Angora sweater, and, and fat, and drunk, and sloppy, and oh, it was dreadful. He was falling apart. Finally, in 1978, Wood hit rock bottom. Two weeks after his eviction on December 10th, 1978, Ed Wood died of a heart attack. He was only 54 years old. You at one of my beautiful and broken children, when I seem as if I'm not, not concerned with the real issues, but I am when I see a real human tragedy, and this, this, this was a human tragedy. Since his death in 1978, Wood's work is finally enjoying the acclaim he so desperately craved. At the end of his life, he was this disastrous failure, and then after his death, this resurgence, this rebirth. Myla Nermi is remembered as television's cult idol Vampira, and knows firsthand how cruel Hollywood can be. Hollywood is known as a town that turns its back on you when you're down, you know, arbitrary, and that is true. But I don't think they would have done it quite so dramatically with Bella, were it not for the fact that he was also a monster. So he was not just an unemployed actor, he was an unemployed monster. Now, since I played Dracula, I'm the boogeyman. <laughs> TV's Vampira will break her long silence about her first meeting with Dean. And rather than saying, how do you do to Jimmy, I said, where is she? And he said, who? And I said, your mother. And he went. James Dean quickly became a hot property. And as one might expect, he was a very popular guy around town. Myla Nurmi, TV's vampire, the mistress of camp, remembers the first time she saw Dean. I was sitting in a booth. And he pulled up in a motorcycle just outside the window next to my booth. And I was electrified. I, I, I shot up from where I was sitting and I said, Jesus Christ. Ooh, 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 that's James Dean. I, I, have to, I have to meet him. I've just been to a wedding and I said, I know. Then he said, I pulled up opposite, across the street opposite the church and they came out and they were the stars. I farted my motorcycle. <laughs> and he tore off. Everybody agrees that James Dean was truly charismatic, a real charmer. But Myla Nurmi remembers her friend's dark side, 
and his morbid preoccupation with his own death. Well, it was, it was clear to everyone who knew Jimmy, who, his, his intimates, it was clear to them that he had a precognizance uh, of his oncoming death. You know, he was racing recklessly. So one of the hottest actors in Hollywood was dead, and people wanted answers, no matter how far-fetched, which, of course, brings us to the curse theory. Many of his fans believe that Dean's friend, Myla Nurmi, cast a death spell on him shortly before his death. I played a character called Vampira, and it was supposed to be comedy. I had been sent to Woodlawn Cemetery where I was, you know, vamping around doing what the photographer told me to do. So I cut out this picture of me sitting at the grave, and I had it made into a postcard. I wrote, having wonderful time, wish you were here, the way we do when we're away on a vacation, because Jimmy was away, right? My life was quite bizarre and ho horrendous there for a while because there were the people who thought possibly I had done in Jimmy. I'm a total pacifist with a complete reverence for life and I always have been. I have never killed anything. It was a karmic carnival. It was everybody's destiny and it's a bizarre carnival and it's extremely strange. This business of so many mysterious deaths, accidental deaths and people dying young, all so mysteriously. So many people that worked on Rebel and that were friends of Jimmy's. Nurmi heard about Jimmy's death through a mutual friend. She thought he was kidding. That's a very unfunny joke. That's very unfunny. She said, no, he's dead. He said, call his exchange. So I did. I called his exchange, and they said, haven't you heard? I said, you mean it's true? They said, yes, it's true. He's dead. He's not totally and only human. He was a mystical being. He was a teacher. A spiritual teacher brought here to make a point and for that to to be a lasting lesson. When I ordered a taxi and went to the cemetery. I watched the first snowflake melt on Jimmy's grave. The taxi was waiting and the first snowflake fell and melted. And I remembered having said to him, how are you going to keep warm this winter? And he had been so frightened when I said that. And I didn't understand it and I thought now maybe that's what he had had precognizance, that he was going to be cold that winter.